Hi, it's Taryn. And Stella from Maple University on the Dice Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Burn, a game designed by David Simlin and Pierre Voyer and published by Morning. We are using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get your chili sauce ready and learn how to play Burn. Burn is a game of set collection and reflexes set in the world of Chile. Each round, players will race to grab totems in order to bid for the right to collect ingredients to build up their chili arsenals. The player who collects the most valuable sets of chilies will win the game. Burn plays three to five players with some rule changes at each player count. And so first we're going to take you through the four player mode for the game and then any changes at three and five. To set up, separate all of the ingredient cards into their separate families and then take any six that you wish to play with. Shuffle them all together and then take the bottom three cards and shuffle this in-game trigger card into them, placing them back on the bottom. Separate the organization cards by the number on their backs, shuffle them and then remove two 12s and two 15s from the game. Then combine them into one stack in ascending order. Find the bank card and place $1 onto it, and then give each individual player $12. Finally, set the board in the center of the table and place the totems onto their matching colored circles. The prototype totems you can see here are wooden, but these will be a more forgiving foam in the finished game. When playing with four players, you will not use the yellow totem. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. Burn is played in rounds. To set up for a round, you will deal out the top two ingredient cards face up and the top organization card face up for all players to see. You will then do a reverse auction among all players bidding to buy these two ingredient cards. To do this, the current first player starts at the number that is printed on the top of the organization deck and counts down backwards from that number. When the countdown reaches a number that you are willing to pay for this round's ingredients, grab the green totem. This is the signal for all players to immediately try to grab the totem of their choice before another player gets it. Any totem is fair game to be taken, even if it's fallen off the table, until such time as it comes to rest in someone's hand. If a player goes early and grabs a non-green totem before the green totem has been taken, then the auction stops and the player suffers a penalty. The penalized player pays $2 to the bank and then the auction starts again from the highest number for all players. If the penalized player doesn't have enough money, then they pay everything they have and must skip this round's auction. Once all players have their totems, you will resolve this round. Firstly, the player with the green totem buys the two ingredients for the cost as chosen in the auction. This money gets distributed as follows. The player who took the red totem takes tax and gets half of this money rounded up. The rest of the money is distributed evenly among the other two players rounded down. And so here, this two would be cashed into two ones and each of the other players would get $1. Anything that's left over goes to the bank. The winning bidder then takes the two ingredients and then either adds them to their own collection or forces them into the collection of another player. Certain card types will grant negative points if you have the most of them or under other conditions, and so this can be a way to harm another player's score. If the player grabbed the green totem too early and doesn't have enough money to pay the bid, then that player is penalized the same way as a player who grabbed a totem early. $2 and then the auction restarts. Next, the player who took the purple totem takes this round's organization card and adds it face up to their collection. There are three types of organization cards, an ongoing effect, which will give you a bonus ongoing in the game, an immediate effect, which you resolve right away, and an end game scoring bonus, which will give you some extra points if you can combo with what the card is asking for. Finally, the player who took the blue totem must take one of the two black market actions. The first option is to pay $5 into the bank to draw two face down ingredient cards from the top of the deck, look at them 
and then choose one to add to their collection face down and then return the other to either the top or bottom of the deck. The other option is to visit the bank and take all of the money currently on the bank. If the player can't afford the $5 to take the black market action, then they must take the bank action. If the player can't afford it and the bank is empty, then the player pays whatever money they have to take the black market action. It is mandatory to take one of these effects. Then the round is over and you'll set up for the next round with two new ingredients for bidding, one new organization card, and then rotate the board 45 degrees before putting all of the totems back on their colors. This way everyone gets a chance to be closest to the key totems. A round can also end if the bid gets down to zero and no player has grabbed the purchase totem, in which case simply discard these two ingredients to the bottom of the deck, deal two new ones, and start again. The first player, that is the player who does the countdown, rotates clockwise from round to round. The end of the game is triggered when this card is drawn, whether face up or secretly by a player. Finish the current round and then proceed to end game scoring. Players reveal any of their face down cards and add them to the different collections and then do any comparisons required with opposing players. Here for example the vinegar is worth one point per card but loses two points if you have the most or loses five if you have none. Anytime there is a tie for one of these categories, all tied players receive the score for the more extreme position. In other words, here, all players who are tied for most vinegar would lose two points. Add up all of the points for your different ingredients, then add any bonuses for your end game bonus organization cards, and one point for every five remaining dollars. The player with the highest score wins. In the event of a tie, whoever has the most ingredients cards wins, if still tied, most money wins, and if still tied, victory is shared. When playing Burn with three players, the only change to the game is that the red totem, representing the tax, is not used. Now, any money that is spent by the player who purchases the cards is divided evenly among the remaining players, with any excess dollar going to the bank. The changes are a little more extensive at five players. You will set up the game using seven families of ingredients instead of six. And each round you'll lay out three face-up ingredients instead of two and use the fifth yellow totem. The player who takes the green totem spends their money to buy any two out of the three face-up ingredients of their choice. As was the case at four players, half of this money goes to the tax player and the rest is evenly split three ways with any left over going to the bank. Purple takes the organization card as usual and blue takes the black market or bank action as usual. Finally, yellow takes the fifth turn. Yellow has two options, either to visit the secondary market by paying $4 to the bank to take the remaining face up ingredient and either add it to their own collection or force it into someone else's or they may take all of the money from the bank. As was the case for the blue player, the yellow player must take one of these actions. If they don't have $4 to spend on the card, then they must take the bank action, and if they don't have enough money and the bank is empty, then they spend whatever they have to take that remaining card. And that's how to play Burn. We hope you enjoyed this video. And the chili. When we film this video, Ben is going to Kickstarter. So we'll put the link in the description below when it is live so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. See you next time.